what's up? This is Odolena from Odolena Digital and today I want to talk about the four steps which will make you competitive with Google Ads in 2019. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. If you haven't seen any of my videos, my name is Udolena. I work at Google. However, all the things that I'm sharing in these videos is things that I've learned from my personal experience as a PPC manager. Uh, I have run ads for other companies and all the opinions that I'm sharing are entirely mine. I'm not an official spokesman of Google. Uh, so I'm just sharing what I think works and what I think is best for a small advertiser to implement straight away. Uh, this channel is about uh, how PPC works. Uh, so what I'm going to share today is four steps for small advertisers, or for large advertisers, for pretty much anyone, things that you can implement right now to stay competitive in 2019, meaning that you have the latest and most updated newest technology uh, and leveraging for your ads performance. So first of all, site-wide tagging. I will share a slide with all the information that I have written here. I know it's not very visible. So site-wide tagging means that every page of your website is tracking uh, users that are coming to your website, what the actions they're taking, if they're signing up, if they're making purchases. So I know this is a very touchy topic with um, all the data sharing and uh, people being aware that now they are tracked everywhere on the internet. There is a lot of confusion coming with this. And especially if you're an advertiser, uh, there are a lot of things that have been said about ads, about remarketing, about you trying to uh, change people's mind. Uh, however, if you are an advertiser, it's really important, especially if you're paying for your traffic to understand where your money is going to. Like what is happening when people click on your ads? Are they taking action? Uh, what they're seeing? Maybe why are they not taking action? It's really important for you to know this. Um, now, uh, Apple recently announced uh, that they are launching something called um, Intelligent Tracking Prevention or ITP. And they launched it last summer and they are updating it this summer, which means that anything that happens on Safari, so anytime that someone is uh, clicking on your ad on Safari and they take um, a valuable action on your website, let's say they sign up or they make a purchase, you are not able to see this uh, because this is third-party cookie. Uh, basically, you are trying to track them and uh, Apple is not very happy with this. So they want to make sure that their users have the maximum amount of privacy. However, for an advertiser, as I said, this is super important. So there are three solutions that you can implement in order to be able to still understand what's happening with your ads, uh, whether uh, this traffic is converting and what is happening with Safari users. So for example, the first one is called uh, gtag.js or global tag. Uh, basically, this is a code that you can get from your Google ads. Uh, I will show you how this works exactly. You basically have to uh, add this code to every page of your website and you will be able to uh, actually track this information. This will turn it into first party cookies. Uh, you will understand uh, you will have it as first party information and you'll be able to see all the interactions on your website, even on Safari browsers. The other one is Tag Manager. So if you are not familiar with Tag Manager, this is basically another Google solution, which allows you to, instead of in, uh, adding a new tag, let's say you have one tag for Google, one for Facebook, one for LinkedIn, and all the other platforms that you're using, instead of adding all these different tags on your website, which is making it heavier, and every time you mess up with your code, there are dangers of something getting broken, uh, you can just have Google Tag Manager where you just uh, install it once on your website and after that you in a very user-friendly interface you're just adding and dropping the new tags that you want uh, to add to your website so if you're using already tag manager the only action that you need to take is to go to um, uh, basically try to install a new tag and then uh, install google uh, conversion linker uh, this is just a few clicks away and then uh, you'll be able to link the conversions that are happening on Safari uh, to your tag manager and understand what's happening and still be able to see this data, conversion data, and also all, uh, fill in your remarketing list with Safari users. Then 
uh, you have Google Analytics. If you are using already Google Analytics, there is no action to take. This means that you have the best solution. So what you need to do is Google, tie Google Analytics to Google Ads, which is also like very simple action, uh, just a few clicks, and you'll be able to actually track this information. So if you have done this already, well done to you. No action on site tagging. Step one, done. Step two, no last click attribution. I actually created a whole video about the concept of attribution. What exactly is attribution? Don't worry if you cannot see this well, I will share um, a PDF under this video so you'll be able to actually see um, exactly how this looks and what is written here. Um, last click, no last click attribution means that anything that's different from giving all the value to the last click. Why? Well, because in 2019, and probably in the future as well, uh, we are using much more than one device. We are probably interacting with the campaign multiple times before taking a final action. So let's say you will uh, see maybe a YouTube ad, then you do a search, uh, then you see a banner somewhere, uh, then you do another search, and at the end, like you convert from an email. So you have this long customer journey with a lot of touch points. So it's absolutely not making sense to give all the value just to the last one. It's just like, for example, you got drunk, like you were drinking different alcohols, but at the end you had this shot of tequila and you say, it was this shot of tequila. It's not everything else that I drank before that, that made me drunk. Um, it's the same with attribution. Basically, you have to measure all the different steps. You must see how your ads are performing and how they're delivering value at different stages of the customer journey, not only the last one. Um, so instead of last click attribution, you have other models like linear, which gives equal value to every step of the journey. Uh, you have time decay, which gives more value the closer uh, the click is to the final conversion. You have position based, which means that you get a lot of credit to the first click and a lot of credit to the last click and you spread the rest of it between uh, the other actions in between. Um, and then you have the data-driven attribution from Google Ads. So this is available only in Google Ads, not in Google Analytics. So if you have enough conversion data, let's say you have about 100, 200 conversions per month, uh, you'll be able to activate data-driven attribution, which is a machine learning solution from Google and allows you to actually see value depending on the context of every conversion. So it's really, really cool. Uh, as every of these models has different flaws, data-driven attribution is basically taking in account a lot of different things, not only uh, whether it was first, last or kind of the time of the conversion, it's taking the context, it's taking the time, what it, how much it took, uh, the context of the queries, the, um, uh, basically the user's data. So it's really, really giving you the full picture of your uh, ads and really helping you to understand the, the whole performance, what, how people came up to converting on your website. And then uh, you have something called smart bidding. So I have devoted multiple articles on smart bidding and I think it's really great. Smart bidding basically means that you uh, let Google bid instead of you. So if you don't know how Google uh, auction works, you can watch my other video, which explains very, very basically how Google ads are actually uh, charging advertisers, uh, how they determine who is first in the auction, second, and etc. So most advertisers right now are using manual bidding, which is quite uh, difficult because you have to constantly make adjustments and you are a human, you are not a machine, you are sleeping, you are taking time off, you work maybe five, eight hours a day, you cannot really make adjustments all the time. And smart bidding is doing this 24 seven, plus it's taking into account things like the user data. So let's say someone is searching, but Google knows that they have been uh, reviewing this product and they have very strong interest in actually buying uh, this kind of product soon. So they might raise the bid or they see that the queries actually they are looking just for an image. They are not looking to buy anything. So they will lower the bid. Um, I think this is based on your goal. So you can decide whether it's uh, target CPA, target cost per acquisition, meaning that you only want to have a certain cost for every conversion on your website. And this is what Google is trying to get. Uh, you have maximized conversion. So meaning that you only want to spend this budget and you want to get the maximum amount of conversions for this budget at any cost. 
So this is what Google is trying to do. Uh, you have target ROAS or target return on ad spend for e-commerce. So let's say you want to get the maximum return. You know how much this product is going to uh, to be sold for. So you want to spend this amount of um, ad uh, budget for it. No more than that. So you get this kind of percentage of return. So Google is trying to do exactly this for you. Pretty, pretty smart. With all these uh, actually strategies, it's really great to implement step one and step two first um, because they need some time to learn. Two weeks for these smart bidding uh, strategies to learn. Uh, literally the algorithm is testing, is trying, there are fluctuations. So you should not make any changes during this time period. Otherwise you will not see the desired effect. So it's really important that you have your attribution, your site-wide tagging done before you start smart bidding. Absolutely crucial. And then the final one is called smart creatives. So smart creatives are um, new ad types like uh, responsive search ads, responsive display ads, dynamic search ads. I know it sounds complicated, but it's actually what it is, is you provide Google with uh, some assets. So this can be 15 headlines, 15 things that you want to mention in your ads uh, or several descriptions, a logo, an image. Um, and then what Google does is they mix and match them together and they test all the different combinations. Uh, so they test all the different combinations together in different image sizes when it's display ads or in different um, ad sizes or so three headlines, one description, two descriptions, one headline, etc. for responsive search ads. So essentially what you see is which is the winning combination, which combination actually people respond to most. And you can change your content in that direction. You can see what pe resonates with your audience and you can actually uh, drive your whole content strategy in a new direction based on this learning uh, that you're getting. So this is all smart creative is all uh, driven by uh, machine learning technology. So if you're using smart bidding with smart creatives, this is absolutely great combination. I know there are a lot of smart and data driven products in this video, but they are all super important and they work really well together. They're designed to work well together. All the things that I'm sharing are completely applicable to any advertiser out there. Uh, they are good for small businesses, for medium size, for large businesses. Nothing what I'm sharing here is a secret. Uh, everything, everything is publicly available. Uh, everything here is uh, not a beta or anything like that. You can access it right now from the Google Ads experience. So let me know how this goes for you. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to hear more from my tips on Google Ads and also other sources, not only Google. Uh, thank you so much and I'll see you next week with another video.